Have you been in a situation where you needed to provide a default parameter for a function? Or perhaps you wanted to generate an error if a parameter was not provided. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at that. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. I recently read a JavaScript tip by David Walsh that generated an error if no parameter was provided for a function. I love the tip because sometimes you want to be that restrictive with a function. However, the tip showed how to do it, but didn't really explain how it works. We will look at the solution and how it works in this tutorial. First, it is important to understand how you provide default parameters for a function. This has been available since ECMAScript 2015, and I've done another tutorial on this, which I will link to in the description. Now let's take a look at a simple function that has an example of a default parameter. Here's a function that multiplies by 5, and this contains a default parameter. So notice how we set it up. Where we put the variable, we then use the assignment operator and then the default value. So if no value is provided when this function is called, it will default to a1. If a value is provided, it will simply multiply that value by 5 and return the results. Otherwise, that will be a1 it multiplies by. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. So here is the multiply by 5. If I enter a 5, then it returns a 25. Now if I call the same function, and this time I don't put a parameter, it uses a default of 1, so it returns a 5. So that's how you provide a default parameter for a function. So that's pretty simple. But how could we generate an error if a parameter is not provided? This, of course, would make the parameter required. Otherwise, when you call the function, or when someone else invoked the function, an error would be generated, so they'd have to make a change. So the solution to that is you set the parameter equal to a function that generates an error. So if the parameter is provided, the function is not invoked. If the parameter is not provided, it sets it to the function, which causes it to be invoked and then produces the error. Let's, let's take a look at that really quick. So I'm going to create that function up here. We'll call it is required. Has nothing passed into it. Basically, all the function does is use the throw statement to generate an error. So it would look like this. Now, throw causes an exception in JavaScript. And we want that exception to be an error. So we create a new error object. And what is the text of that error? We will pass in parameter is required. So that's what will show up in the error. So we have that function set up. Now we simply need to set this variable to the function like this. So if a value is provided, then it doesn't do this assignment. This assignment is not complete. However, if a value is not provided, then it tries to do this assignment. And what happens is it invokes this function, which causes the exception to be thrown, which is an error. And that will generate an error for us. So let's go ahead and save this and give it a try. Now I'm going to multiply by 5 again, like we did before. And we can see that that comes back as 25. That works fine. However, if we multiply, we call that function without a value, we get this error message. Uncaught error parameter is required. There's the text of the error, and it shows just 
and it shows us the line number where that happened. So that would then require us to provide a parameter for that function. That can be great if you're working with a team and you've set up a function that is very restrictive this way. It can be great for yourself as well if you're working on a large project. You may forget that you want a parameter provided for that function. Because by default, JavaScript does not require that. So that's a nice little JavaScript tip that can be useful when needed. Before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. There are additional benefits to certain levels. You can follow a link in the description for that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. I just released a new course on functional programming. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.